Hello, I'm Rory, and when I'm not on CBBS, I work to try and protect some very big birds that live very far away. That's albatrosses that soar over our southern oceans. But I'm here today to chat a bit with you about some birds that are much closer to home. <laughs> Now, we're all obviously spending a lot of time at home just now. And from your window, or if you're lucky, from your garden, you're probably paying a bit more attention to the animals that we share our towns, cities, villages and countryside with. Wherever you are, you're never far from a bird. So I know what you're thinking, ah, you've seen a pigeon before, mate, but there are plenty more out there. And in this wee video, I'm going to show you how to identify some of the more common birds that visit our homes. But first of all, how can we get a bit closer to birds? I've got some ideas. Let's check them out. In what must be some incredibly rare footage, we see the humble peanut up close. That's right, peanuts are one of the best things to feed birds. And what looks depressingly like my own head, this is indeed a peanut without the skin on. Now you can get these in nice big bags, just like this here. Big bag of peanuts, and that'll go nicely in that cage feeder. My favourite thing actually though to feed birds is seeds, and in particular sunflower seeds. Let me show you some here. Those are sunflower seeds. Little grey seeds. But the best ones to get are those that don't have little black shells on. Because the birds pull them off anyway and they'll chuck them all over your balcony, the street, your garden, wherever you live. It'll make a mess. So you want to go for these little seeds here and they'll go nicely in that tube feeder. Or you could even make your own feeder for these out of an old plastic bottle. That's good. Let's pop them up. can be a bit of a slow process waiting for birds to arrive at your feeders especially if you've never had any up before and you just put them up so you've got to play the waiting game sometimes for a while and while we wait to see who comes let's learn a bit about some of the birds that we might see in our gardens or from our windows The first bird I'd like to talk to you about is the house sparrow. House sparrows are little brown birds, basically. You might think a little brown bird, not very exciting, but house sparrows are brilliant wee birds. They hang out in family groups that are very, very chatty. They cheep away. It's definitely a cheeping sound they make. And they like to hang out in hedges and bushes. And the males are sort of chestnutty brown in the back um, with a light colour in the front, sort of white and grey, and they've got a little black mask on. Now the females don't have that little black mask that the males have, so that's how you can tell them apart. But very, very chatty little birds, and one of the more common birds that we can find close to our homes, particularly uh, in cities. Now the next bird I'd like to chat about is the starling. Starlings have this beautiful colour, they're sort of iridescent, shining with greens and blues and purples and little specklety bits of white on their back. They've also got this bright yellow beak as well and they're also very chatty too. They're excellent mimics, um, so they copy all sorts of noises that they hear and they even copy other birds. So that's a tough one actually because sometimes they can trick you into thinking they're another bird, but a starling is a very distinctive bird to look at. Another bird you might see in your garden is the chaffinch. It belongs to the finch family. Um, there are lots of different kinds of finches, but they've mostly got stubby little pointy triangle beaks, which are perfect for eating things like seeds and buds from trees. The male has a lovely grey hood on and a sort of pinky reddy front. So you might see it and think, oh, that must be a robin. They're not robins at all, uh, very different birds, finches. Yeah, but a chaffinch, male, pinky red front, grey hood in the back, and the female looks quite different. She's sort of dusky, tawny brown in the front and, and looks quite different from the male. So you can see the difference between the two here. And how could we forget the wood pigeon? Now, I know what you're thinking, right? Pigeon, not very exciting. But wood pigeons are quite different from the feral pigeons that we might see right in the city centre snacking on folks' discarded chippies. Wood pigeons are bigger, 
bit chunkier. And they've got a nice little white patch on their neck. And they've got a really distinctive call, which you've probably heard. Perhaps you've been a bit annoyed um, if a wood pigeon has woken you up in the morning by sitting on the roof of your house or outside your window going Yeah, what do you think? Passable? Well, you might recognise that sound. That is the call of a wood pigeon. And I hear one in my garden quite frequently. They've also got quite a distinctive walk, sort of plodding. Chunky looking thing. Yeah. Wonderful birds, the wood pigeons, very easily found not far from where humans live. Robins. Let's talk about robins. People always think robins only are around at Christmas. That is, of course, nonsense. Robins live with us year round. Of course, they're associated with Christmas. You always see them on Christmas cards and sitting in snow and stuff. But robins are here, as I say, year round and like to nest uh, in the bushes with a nice open view they like to be able to see out. Uh, but robins are very distinctive. You'll know them, I'm sure. Brown in the back and a, a very obvious orangey red chest. And they love hopping around in the ground looking for things to eat. Robins also have a really nice song and they sing year round. But uh, I know it sounds beautiful, but often robins are singing. It's because they've been a bit grumpy, really. They're singing to let other robins know, this is my patch. Stay away, pal. And then we have blue tits coal tits, great tits and long-tailed tits. Now blue tits are named after the blue cap at the top of their head. So they've got a little blue cap, a bit of white and then a black stripe through their eyes. They've got a yellowy chest. Now great tits look quite like that but they've actually got a black cap on their head and the males have a big black tie uh, coming down the front of them. They've also got yellow uh, on their chest too. Then let's go to the coal tit which looks a little bit different. It's smaller and it's sort of duskier than those two. And the way to tell them apart is a little white stripe on the back of their head that is quite distinctive. And last of all, long-tailed tits. And they're completely different from the rest and there's no mistaking them. They look a bit like fluffy lollipops, really. They're very cute. They like to hang out in big groups and you'll see them all together. They've got a great big long tail and a big fuzzy body. They've got cute little, little beaks on them. They chatter away to each other. So fantastic birds to look for and you'll surely be able to tell them apart. How might you count birds from your home then? Well, actually, this is something that the RSPB does every year with the Big Garden Bird Watch and with the Big Schools Bird Watch too, which you might have already done. So what you need to do is take one hour of the day, any time that you want, really, as long as it's daylight so you can see what's going on outside. Look out your window from wherever you are, onto your garden, onto a local park, onto a tree, and count all the birds that you see of all the different kinds in that hour. Now don't total them up, okay? So don't go, uh, if you get one wood pigeon, it flies away, then you get two later, then you get three after that. You don't add one plus two plus three to get six. I'm good at math, see, thanks. What you need to do is only count the highest number of any one kind of bird that you see at the one time. So if you're looking out in your garden and you see one blue tit, then it goes away. Then you see five blue tits. Then two more fly in, you see seven. Then they all go away. Then you see three later on. All you record at the end of that hour is the seven blue tits you saw at one time. That was the most that you saw in any one moment. And that helps us to build up a picture of how many birds are in people's gardens when we do the big garden bird watch and the big schools bird watch. So we're not counting all the birds in total that we see, only the total number of birds of any one kind that we see at any one time. That makes sense? Hope so. Now, before we go, why don't I treat you to some of my bird impressions? The blackbird. Thanks very much for listening, and don't forget there are lots of resources online to look for, particularly with the RSPB, also with the British Trust for Ornithology, the BTO, um, lots of good resources online that you can look up to learn more about birds. But hopefully this was a helpful introduction. Nice to see you. Bye.